I'm Ronnie Eldridge. Welcome to Eldridge & Company. An honored scholar and educator, Elizabeth Nunes is a distinguished professor of English at Hunter College. She teaches fiction writing, but she's also a very distinguished award-winning author herself and a great storyteller. And she's my guest today. Hello. I'm so Hi. glad to have you. Well, I'm so glad to be <laughs> back again with oh, you. Good. <laughs> so the story now is a memoir. Yes, it's a memoir. It's a lovely memoir. Thank you. So it's about your family, who I think I've met in other books. You have. You <laughs> because have. you write a lot around mm -hmm. your experience and family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what made you think of doing this? Yeah, because I am a novelist. Yes. You know, um, I had written eight novels before, and I could expected that that's what I would continue doing. Um, I, I never in, ever expected to write a memoir, and I think something... You know, I think there's something that happens in your life that ushers you into a new area. Mm -hmm. And it, for me, unfortunately, it was the death of my mother mm -hmm. and the lingering question that I, I have pursued in novel after novel after novel, which is that tension between the mother who remained in the Caribbean and the daughter who immigrated to America. It just was just constant, um, like a constant theme sort of running through all my novels. And this was about time that I faced it head on. Yeah. What was it? Yeah. Can it be healed? Yeah. Was it healed before yeah. she died? I got the feeling it was kind of healed before it, she died. Ronnie, that was just a complete stroke of luck. Isn't that something? Yeah. That, um, uh, as you recall in the yeah. uh, memoir, uh, my mother died in August of 2008, and usually I come to Trinidad once a year for maybe a week or two weeks the most. That's it. And in 2008, I happened to be there three times. Mm. The first time for three months, mm -hmm. which was the longest mm -hmm. I had ever been, um, you know, there. there. At consecutive time. And then I came in a second time, and the last time I came, I came right up to who I left the day of her birthday in July 22nd, and she died a month later. Isn't that something? It, it, it was very So strange. what was the, what is the difference? It's a, it's what is culture. What is it? The Be difference between, between the daughter who came here and the mother who stayed. Well, I've had a good time to think about this. <laughs> <laughs> um, not only while I was writing the memoir, but afterwards. And I think what I have had been, pursu been pursuing is the sense of abandonment, which I think still remains true. But where I had placed that abandonment in my novels was the abandonment of this girl, who was very much like me, who, um, whose mother happily sent her to America and tells the girl that it's for her own good. You know, there's opportunity in America that she herself never had. And of course, the girl is young at that point, although for me, I was, the first time that separation came, I was 16, and that seems old, but it wasn't. No. Not for somebody right. in, that, in the period I grew up in and in Trinidad. So the, the question that always remained for me is, why hadn't she asked me to come back? And she never did. It's interesting. She didn't send your other sisters here, did she? That way? Well, I was the first, a family of 11, uh -huh. I was the first to come to America. And that was unusual because we were, part, we were a British colony. People went to England or they went to one of the countries in the British Commonwealth. My brother and my sister before me did. So uh, when I said, I, when I was going to America, you know, everybody said, what's this? this you, you, mm. know, you go to America for different reasons, not for education. You know, they, they couldn't see that coming from from there. Mm. So um, by the time she, I, 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 I never figured it out why she, uh, why she hadn't asked me back. Mm. Um, my other sisters would come and get their education. Um, one of them did like me in terms of my sisters, my, mm -hmm. some of my brothers did, but went back home. <laughs> you know, they went to England or they went to Canada and came back home. Yeah. Um, so for me, and, and then my mother was very fond of um, making me an American, <laughs> you know, 
And it, in a way, she didn't have too much trouble doing that. <laughs> showed you off. <laughs> yeah, but she didn't have too much trouble doing that because I liked so much about America. <laughs> so I would be saying American things, but every time she would say it, I didn't take it as a compliment. So interesting. I took it as one more knife oh. in me saying, oh. yeah, you are. Yeah. And what you're asking me what the difference was. Well, what the difference was was when I was writing the memoir, as you recall, I have a scene when I was five years old when my mother and father went away and left all of us yeah. for, for months by ourselves. And I think that was it. Thing. I think that one thinks, I think that that, that sense of abandonment had deeper roots than it's so the interesting. immigrant. You know, your father, in the book, is your father went to England to do some work. Mm -hmm. And he, your mother stayed home with the children. Yeah. But she missed him so much that mm -hmm. she then said, goodbye, I'm leaving. I mean, she left people in charge and doing that. And that's always reminded me now that I'm much older, is the relationship children have with their parents. Because now, you know, I'm even older than my parents were at mm -hmm. the time. And we don't think that they have the same love and, and feelings I know. That at that age. That's such an interesting thing. Do you know what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying. And I have been asked this question before, but there was something we all knew, all 11 of us knew, that my parents had a marriage mm -hmm. and they were husband and wife. And their choice, that they loved us, they mm -hmm. loved us and they did a lot for us, mm -hmm. but that they came first. Isn't that Their interesting? relationship came first. And it was something I was very envious of, not of them, but of my friends whose parents seemed to devote their whole lives to, to their them. children. Yeah. No, to their children. Yes, I know, to the D friend, yeah, friends. To, yeah. yeah, to directly yeah. to them. Yeah. That's so interesting. And um, my yes. parents, it was the, when my father traveled and he traveled a lot, my mother often went with him. It's so interesting. Yeah. yeah. What I love about your novels is you learn so much more than just reading a story. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things in, about emotions and stuff and the influence of the British Empire, yeah. this, it, is it true, the stiff upper lip kind of concept? Well, you know. To a degree. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, we both hate and adore English yeah. culture. Mm -hmm. they, they exist side by side. Um, we had to adore it because mm -hmm. we were taught the literature. Mm -hmm. um, and we were taught not just the literature, but to memorize the literature. So um, much, of, much of our frame of reference was coming from that literature. Uh, we were taught the history. Um, that's, how col that's how one colonizes people. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, isn't it? You know, you, and at the same time, we were vastly aware that um, there was a ceiling in our own country and mm -hmm. with our own people, so that you had to have a lot of resentment about that. And um, for me particularly, because um, I think my father was a brilliant man, so it was very hard to see him fight against that just because he wasn't British, you know. Mm. Um, nice. I, I, I being supervised by people who were vastly in intellectually inferior than he was, so there was that, you know. And then of course we always have race, yeah, we definitely yeah. have race, but um, yeah, but it, I think I, I, it, people in the Caribbean, you know, they, they say, and I think I say that in, in, in this memoir, they talk about America having a racial problem, and then they find it more difficult to uh, analyze the, the, the race problem in the Caribbean because it's more color. Yeah. It's a shade of color. Yeah, because the majority of the people are, are people of color. So then what happens is, um, and the British did that. They treated people who were lighter skin better than they, uh, people who had different texture here. They had more advantages than people who were darker skin and who had a different texture of hair. And did they come from different places, the people with the darker skin? Well, Trinidad, uh, if, if the original. Yeah, I mean. Uh, 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 if you want to, to look at the, the, the vanishing of a, of a people, you have to look in the Caribbean because there were no people of African descent in the Caribbean. Yes, there were right. no people of East Indian descent in the Caribbean or, or Europeans. 
they were all Amerindians. They were Caribs, Arawaks, Warahoos. So you start from there. You start from the, the Spanish conquistadors bringing their diseases that killed off a lot of the people. And now Trinidad is close to Venezuela. So a lot of them just crossed that, that um, gulf and went into the forest in, 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 Ven you know, in South America. So people of African descent were, are right. there because of slavery. Yeah. Uh, because of sugarcane yeah, and over. cocoa. Yeah. And then when emancipation came in 1834, then the British had their plantations. They needed workers. So what did they do? They went to India and they went to China. But the difference was that they offered the, these came as indentured laborers and they offered them five acres of land. Uh, if in, in five years, they can either go back to their country or keep the five acres. So when, they, they, when their five years of indentureship was over, they were ahead of the game. They had five acres right, of land. Right. So that's, you know, you look in Trinidad, more than half the population is East Indian. They, they, they have roots from India. A good bit of the population now has their, root, their roots from Africa, but it's all so mixed up. And then the Chinese who came couldn't deal, they, 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 the sun was too much for them. They couldn't make it yeah. in the, yeah. So they ended up being <coughs> in the dry goods business. And then the other thing which I say in the memoir is that then the British got scared. You know, the balance of power was so changing. Like, absolutely, the melting pot was not including the white, the people right. of no color. Right. So then they opened it up to Europeans. Uh -huh. And that's where my great-grandfather came, from Portugal. Uh -huh. You know, they, they yeah. got the people from Portugal, from, from Spain, from... What was the incentive to bring them there? More land or not? Um, these were not people who had... Just the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. An adventure. Yeah. And, and land, yeah. And they, yeah. Were, they were given advantages. They were ahead of... The, they became... The people, right. who, yeah. People who own land, who own businesses, who... Yeah. Right. And that's still visible today. Yeah. It's not something. Well, it is something, but it's to be expected because they had... They owned yeah. the land. They had the land. How does, the, how does Trinidad differ from... What's an island that would be French? Martinique or Guadeloupe? Yeah. How do they... How, how does it differ? Um, well, the French, uh, Martinique and Guadeloupe are not independent, politically independent. No, They're sure. still connected to France, and they like it. I think the French, um, when you go to Martinique, you feel as though you're in Paris. You, no, well, not Paris. You feel that you're yeah. in, in France. Yeah. It's I mean, looser. No, the, they, 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 they are Francophiles, all yeah. of them. Oh. They, they love the language, the, the culture, the... Um, in, in Guadeloupe, to me, the people are much more resistant, you know, mm -hmm. they, 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 but their economies are tied to, to France. It's like having another state in, like United States, yeah. having another state, Martinique. Yeah. And, but um, it's, it, 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 it depends. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this loosely, but it's yeah. not, it's, it's not, not correct. Right. I mean, there are a lot of people in, in, in Martinique we're, who, who... We're who, generalizing. Yeah, very much generalizing. Mm -hmm. But they, there isn't the same kind of um, political force asking for independence, although there is in Guadeloupe, but there isn't as yeah, much yeah. in Martinique. It's interesting. Yeah. The love affair the of love your affair. parents. Mm -hmm. um, and the difference uh, in what... How did it affect your marriage? Yes. Well, I, don't like, I mean, I'm, we're talking personal because you wrote a memoir, yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> We could talk about it. Well, I think that the idea that people divorce, the idea that um, children do not live with their mother and the father, in my family, that just didn't exist um, for generations. I, it, we, there was always my great, great, I, we can trace it back that there was, as far as we know, there was a marriage and there were children in the marriage. And then I was very close to my grandparents, who my, my father's parents. And um, there was no question. I mean, it just stayed. That they stayed and hopefully happily. Mm -hmm. And certainly I had my parents. My parents were married for 65 years. Mm -hmm. And th there was a clear bottom line that no matter what, this was not a uh, uh, marriage that was going to break up. They can fight as they want to, but tomorrow morning everything will be back. 
And we understood that as children. And there was that sense of security where you could do what you wanted to do and that the, the struggles and the fights would not be so terrible because this was an understanding. <coughs> so when it came to my marriage, uh, um, I, I wanted to do the same thing. I had that from the family, but I also had Roman Catholicism. I grew up under very rigid, from my mother, my father wasn't, yeah. but from my mother. So, and of course, in the Catholic Church, if you get divorced at 21. What's your future? Zero. Yeah. What's your sex life? Zero. Yeah. Because you cannot remarry and to have sex is to commit adultery. So it's um, a heavy burden. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I, and, uh, and the other thing I talk about is birth control, which, yeah. which I think. So in a way, I think in this memoir, I am more angry with the Catholic Church it's than I am to the British colonial. It sounded like that, definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, it, you know, does coming to America have an impact on the way you were thinking or are thinking now? I think it reinforced. I think it made me stronger. But I think I always saw that there was something awfully, awfully wrong. wrong. Um, I saw my mother wake up have a baby in nine months, and in ten, the, the tenth or eleventh month, start throwing up again because she, she was Pregnant. sick through oh, okay. that pregnancy. So every morning it was to hear her gagging in the, and the babies and the babies and the babies um, that just went on and on and on and on and on, and um, and there was nothing there for her. There was just the rhythm, which was didn't make any sense. And, you know, the Catholic Church had it both ways, to stay away from your, not to give yeah. in to your husband, right. what, the conjugal rights that your husband had, you had, that was also sinful, not to do it. Right. And, and at the same time, you're scared to have sex, because right. if, when you do, you're going to have a baby. You're going to have a baby. So I, I, I just was so, I just, but then I also was, very much into the church too. So yeah. I was in that kind of conflict all the time. I, I, I really felt that my mother was not cut out to have that many children. Um, temperamentally, emotionally, and certainly physically, because she was pregnant 14 times and had five miscarriages that mm. killed, almost killed her. Right up to the end when she was 50, you know, so, but she, she just was so scared that she would go to hell if she used artificial birth control. And she just couldn't handle it. My mother, her body couldn't handle it, and emotionally she couldn't handle it. But the men were free for adultery, right? Or they didn't believe as much, or well, what? Well, I can't speak so much for the men. I suppose I can speak. There was a decision I made, and stupidly, I said I would not marry a Trinidadian. I had made up my mind absolutely about that, because I had seen what happened in my home, and I had seen what happened with my uncles and mm -hmm. friends. They kept the home together, but we all knew the men were straying. Mm -hmm. um, didn't work out that way, because I ended up marrying an adulterer myself. <laughs> uh -oh. An American, so you know, it didn't matter. Man is, but I think what happened. I think you have to put that in a in a time. I think there was a time where the society um, it did not frown as much as um, as it does today on adultery. I think that um, so that, and then I I also think that um, it depends on what the man, how the man conducts himself. I mean, my father con was a wonderful father. And if you ask my mother right to the end, he was a wonderful husband. And all their fights were about <laughs> the, 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 the strain. Yeah. But she, we never, we could only guess it. Yeah. There was no evidence. He was discreet. Extremely. He was not only discreet, but the society is discreet. Yeah. It's, you have one son. One son. Is there a difference between having 
so many siblings and just one child? I know. It's amazing, isn't mm -hmm. it? I wanted to have more. You did. But I had a bad marriage. Yeah. And I, and I had a, a, the bad beginnings of my son, um, practically bearing my son alone and mm -hmm. raising him up in his young age alone. And, um, and I said I would never do this again. Um, it's wonderful for me to see how my son raises his two daughters. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that gives me, makes me feel that there, there was something that came out of it. But yeah, um, it's, it's so you the think different. children from big families suffer from lack of attention? I do. Yeah. Oh, I think it's, it's a very I, important I think people are fooling themselves if they think that they have a lot of children and that these children all you know, um, children want children want from their parents, which they do not get from their siblings, which is unconditional love. And that's why I love um, Toni Morrison's Beloved. Mm -hmm. Because when Beloved appears, it doesn't matter. She, she has that kind of hunger that she wants from a mother, and that's what children want. And there is no way parents can give it to a lot of children. No, you can't. You can't. You can barely give it to one child. Yeah or two children. Has the influence of the church um, in Trinidad diminished at all? I think as far as birth control it has. I think people just find it, mm. I mean, when I say that, I mean people aren't having as many children yeah. and my siblings yeah. don't have them. So yeah. carefully, uh, clearly they're, they're using birth control. But the church, uh, not, I think the church is having a hard time. Mm. I think this new Pope, is the best hope the Catholic Church has. Yeah. I mean, I was in Guadeloupe a couple of years ago, and they barely have a parish priest for a church. And there are times that they, give ma they have a mass without a priest, Amazing. which is not a mass. Right. So, um, but I think that the, the church is, has too much control over people's private lives. And this question of divorce and birth control, and you see how it came up in the 2012 elections, mm -hmm. and it's coming up again. It's, uh, it's so difficult, isn't it? It's just, and the guilt and the fear. It's hypocr right? hypocritical. You write about the fear yeah. of your friend's parents going into limbo. Me? Yeah. yeah. That, yeah. that, yes. Yeah. I mean, it, and so when you ask the question, did it make a difference coming to the United States? Yes. The Unite when I came to the United States, I got your, this whole idea of independence and freedom, which is in the DNA yeah. of Americans, made me feel, yes, okay, Elizabeth, you're right. If I had remained in Trinidad, yeah. I probably would have radical. continued yeah. because two of my sisters, well, all my sisters got divorced, but two of them who remarried uh, want annulments. Oh. One of them got it, and <laughs> two of them, you know, desperately want annulment. So that's, I can't explain to them that so that's totally it's so stupid. so silly, isn't it? <laughs> yes. But the reason is they can't go to communion. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. And I love the, the, the fear in the family when at the funeral of your father. <laughs> <laughs> what did the family think about the book? They haven't read it yet. They haven't read Most it yet them. because the, the memoir has just been released. One of my sisters has, and she, she likes my writing, she likes the way I set it up, all sorts of stuff. But she does have a problem with the way I handled my father, what yeah. my father, because he was a super father. Yeah. He was excellent. But she didn't want you to talk about the affairs. Well, I think she was in denial as, uh. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Do your books sell in Trinidad? Do my books sell in Trinidad? <laughs> I think, I think Trinidad has, well, this is going to sound really awful for me to say, but I think Trinidad still has the vestiges of that British colonialism. They read books published in England. Isn't that interesting? Books by British writers or books by Caribbean writers that were published by English publishers. I think that still prevails. So interesting. When did you realize you were a writer? Well, I, I think I say in the, my memoir that my um, siblings often say that <laughs> whatever Elizabeth says, cut it in half. <laughs> and that's because the for me, I, I think I had the, 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 the eye of the, a writer that I would see something and I would, imagine, I would immediately imagine it bigger and yeah. more colorful than it actually was. 
And so it, it went from that to reading books, which even expanded my imagination to writing. And, and I started scribbling about seven, eight years old. Yeah, I was, amazing. yeah. Well, you're known for the elegance with which you write. Thank you. And, and the, the lyrical sound of it. And it is that you take something and really can just make it yeah. so important and so wonderful. I mean, you just, I, I feel when I'm reading your books, I'm in Trinidad. I yeah. can see the, the flowers and the pond and the this and the that all around. It's just, um, yeah. it's a great talent. Well, I tell my students that you have to write with your ear. So many times I actually, I do know what I want to say, but I, I know it's not right until I hear the rhythm. There's a rhythm, the word has to be just right. The sentence has to just flow into the next sentence. The paragraph has to flow into the, and that you can hear with your ear. So you, so, so you reread your manuscripts when you're writing? You read them out loud? I don't read them out loud, but I'm reading them in my in, mind. In your mind. Yeah. I'm, I'm hearing the, the, the beat, the flow of it. And when it's not right, it, I just work it and work it until it is right. Is it a, a talent that you were born with? Is a writer born with that talent? Well, I think it is one that that's the kind of writing I like. Mm -hmm. So I start off liking that kind of uh, writing where the, the, where, the, where the writer takes you in, this, uh, in a kind of stream. You're not even aware of the black and white symbols in front mm -hmm. of you, just flowing like that. And that's, you know, and it's a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot, a, lot, a lot of practice. <laughs> We've come to the end of this program. Oh, so this wow. is a great book. Thank Everybody, you. People should read it, but they should also read your novels because it's all in a funny way. I don't hope you won't be offended. It is a continuous story. It is a continuous. Yes. It is a continuous yeah. story. Congratulations. Thank, and thank you. you thank you so much. Thank Fanny. you. If there are any people you'd like to hear and topics you'd like us to explore, please let me know. You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. Or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you.